Delighted to be here to discuss the investment gap in Europe and how to address it. Um, the EIB, as the, as the EU bank, as, as we like to be called, uh, was created um, to do just this, was to address Europe's investment gap. Um, and indeed, our own president um, of the bank, uh, Werner Hoyer, gave details uh, on how the EIB achieves its objectives in a speech here, in, in actually in March 2014. Um, since then, the investment plan for Europe has further raised the involvement of the EIB uh, in, in the European economy, and, um, and, but prevailing economic conditions indicate that more needs to be done. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about how the new challenges of Brexit are facing, uh, are, 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 uh, how we intend to address those. Given the, the clear threat to stronger economic recovery and the added uncertainty of the unique impact of Brexit on Ireland, Action needs to be taken now to ensure that, that um, a lot of the infrastructure bottlenecks here in particular are addressed. No one knows exactly what Brexit will mean for Ireland, except that uncertainty will increase, challenges will need to be overcome, and new opportunities for Ireland will emerge. Um, so in, in, in the short address, and I, I will try and get through the address as quickly as possible so we can get to the more interesting part, um, I'll explain the role of the EIB and how we contribute to addressing the investment gaps uh, that hinder economic recovery across Europe. I'll turn uh, my attention to the investment plan for Europe, how that's working, how that it was designed, and kind of give a state of play on that. And in closing, I'll try and consider some of the opportunities and challenges uh, facing Ireland in particular. The good news, obviously, is that the overall economic recovery across Europe, as we know, is looking ever healthier as it gains resilience and spreads more evenly across member states, markets, and different sectors. In line with the global economy, the EU economy continues to gain resilience, and after a period of often severe adjustment towards export-led growth, is increasingly driven by domestic demand, obviously, which is more sustainable. Uh, GDP growth uh, continues to improve in nearly all member states, and Ireland's economy in particular continues to band ahead. I won't uh, bore all of you or Dan with the statistics. Uh, you know them better than I do, but I think what's particularly encouraging about Ireland uh, is that unlike the economic, uh, strong economic growth of a decade ago, it spread more evenly across a number of sectors. Um, labour markets across Europe continue to improve too, with employment figures picking up and the unemployment rate declining. Unemployment in Ireland has fallen below the EU average. Uh, financing conditions across the EU appear to be improving. At a fundamental level, sovereign yields remain uncommonly low, even for longer term and lower rated issuers. And obviously some questions about the sustainability of that. Beyond that, bank lending rates across the EU have, have fallen and lending volumes are picking up. This underlines the strength of accommodative monetary policies, which have guaranteed liquidity and low refinancing rates, as well as boosting asset values. That being said, considerable imbalances, uncertainties and challenges remain, especially within the euro area and the economic outlook, indeed, as uh, President um, uh, Draghi has indicated, do remain fragile. Investment in particular has sustained a severe and sustained shock, and though recovering lingers some six percentage points below pre-crisis levels as a percentage of European GDP. With investment gaps accumulating, long-term competitiveness is being undermined, which does little to improve the, this fragile outlook. As an additional constraint, policy space does remain limited, with monetary policy uh, highly accommodative, and, and uh, as we all know, as easy as it's going to get, uh, and fiscal stabilisation policies remaining dominant. Infrastructure investment across the EU has taken a major hit as public capital expenditure was pared back successfully in the wake of um, austerity measures. To illustrate the point, public investment to GDP has, clined, has, has declined across Europe from 3.2% of GDP in 2007 to 2.7% in 2016, the lowest level since data are available. In 2016, Public investment levels in Italy, Portugal, Ireland, Spain, Croatia, um, on the periphery, if you like, and a few core countries, France and the Netherlands, are at their lowest point since 1995. Ireland in particular suffered harshly in this regard when, during a period of drastically reduced GDP, the share of infrastructure spending in GDP has been more than halved and, in fact, is now the lowest uh, in the European Union. Beyond infrastructure, investment in the EU faces considerable challenges with import important uh, socio-economic consequences. Let's take the labour market, for example. By historical standards, unemployment in most member states remains highly elevated. 
High youth and long-term unemployment rates are a particular concern as they can give rise to, as we know, uh, hysteresis, um, uh, per permanent losses of uh, potential output. Indeed, this is particularly challenging in a time of swift global and technological change when adaptability and up-to-date skill sets are as important uh, as never before, including as complements to ever more sophisticated capital investment. Let me say a few words about the role of the EIB. In the Treaty of Rome, uh, the European Economic Community committed to create a European bank. This was achieved in 1958 with the establishment of the EIB, the only bank com commonly owned by the member states. And Ireland is a shareholder since its, uh, since its own accession to the European Community in 1973. In furthering the EU's goals, the bank's current priorities are to support growth and employment, cohesion, and the fight against climate change. As a public financial, uh, financial institution, we distribute our funding advantage throughout Europe. In doing so, the EIB seeks to crowd in other sources of financing, particularly from the private sector, in support of high-quality investment projects, typically with a long-term orientation, looking for public good and productivity-enhancing uh, effects of investments, such as uh, areas such as transport network, networks and R&D. We enjoy a AAA credit rating, uh, so obviously we fund on the capital markets, not through budgets, but, but would paid in capital from the taxpayers of 61 billion uh, euro. Um, we have a balance sheet of about 570 billion uh, euro. Uh, that's about uh, has doubled effectively over the last decade during the crisis years from about 300 billion. And we are in fact the largest multilateral lender and borrower in the world. So by volume, it's not well known, we do about twice the lending volumes of the World Bank uh, every year. Um, in 2016, uh, the contribution of EI group activity to investment across Europe rose to 83.8 billion euros. So, in other words, that's our total lending volumes and investments through the European Investment Fund came to just under 84 billion euro last year, which in turn is supporting and mobilizing well over a quarter of a trillion euros, about 280 billion according to our calculations of total investment in a single year. This is a key point for us. We measure our success not just on how much we lend, but how much we in turn mobilize and catalyze, uh, consistent with our philosophy that we're a crowding in bank, not a crowding out bank. Over recent years, the effect on overall investment has been growing. Uh, the results from a smarter deployment of resources, in other words, combining EIB financing with private capital, EU funds and grants, as well as national resources, uh, as well as advisory support from the EIB's um, in-house experts, uh, to maximise economic effect, and this is making a, different, a difference. The bank's engagement in this period, which follows the member state finance capital increase granted in the summer of 2012, when there was a 12 billion capital increase, is expected to generate, according to our uh, analysis, hundreds of thousands of new jobs and make uh, add an additional 0.8% to Europe's GDP once the projects are operational. As a long-term investor, the measurable effects will continue to accumulate over time. By 2030, we estimate that the EIB financing in 2015 investment will have supported 1.4 million additional European jobs and an increase in GDP of 1.1% at that stage. Earlier, I mentioned the importance of prospects uh, for, for young people in particular. Um, I just want to say one thing about our financing uh, impacts on, on opportunities for young people. Um, since its launch in 2013, the EIB's Skills and Jobs Investing for Youth program has provided more than 37 billion euros to projects that support jobs and skills improvement for young people. Most of that deployed, in fairness, uh, in southern European countries, Italy, Spain, Portugal and Greece, uh, which were particularly affected by the crisis and where youth unemployment levels were particularly elevated. And the, Let me say a word about the Investment Plan for Europe. The Investment Plan for Europe is another crucial element uh, in the EU's response to the poor investment climate. And the EIB, as the central cog, if you like, is, is actively in implementing it. The current aim of the plan is to leverage an EU, EU budget guarantees of about 16 billion and 5 billion of the EIB's own resources to generate a total of 315 billion euros worth of investment by financing projects in line with EU policies. The plan rests on three pillars. The European Fund for Strategic Investments, or FC, which we'll come back to, the European Investment Advisory Hub, which is basically a centre of expertise within the EIB for, um, for supporting and advising member states in the preparation of investment projects, 
and then reductions in barriers to investment uh, across the member states themselves. So in other words, the regulatory and legislative agenda um, to open up new investment opportunities. But FC, in fairness, is the core of the plan, the Fund for Strategic Investments. It was created to finance, uh, to finance the projects of large corporates, SMEs and mid-caps, mainly in the areas of strategic infrastructure, digital and transport, research and innovation, education and development of renewable energies, and resource efficiency, including energy efficiency. As of April 4, which is the latest uh, data we have, our last board meeting, total approved EIB group financing stood at uh, 34 billion euros for 477 FC projects, of which the EIF, our subsidiary uh, fund, represents about a quarter. Total associated investment activity amounts to about 184 billion euros. So this is the, the additional investment that we mobilize, which is well over half of the original aim of 315 billion. Reflecting the perceived investment needs in Europe, but also reflecting its confidence in the IB's capacity, ba uh, capacity based on progress to date, the Commission has now proposed to expand the plan to deliver investment of 500 billion euros by 2020. Now, I have to say they proposed that before Brexit, um, but the, no the number of uh, 500 billion, so we just have to see to what extent um, the removal of the UK from those figures means the 500 billion remains intact, probably not. As I have already mentioned, um, lack of risk appetite and sharing are important factors underlying the po poverty of the current investment climate. And in order to address this, FC eligibility requires projects to have an elevated risk profile. The EIF, our subsidiary, the European Investment Fund in particular, increasingly provides equity and quasi-equity financing to address this market gap. It's a strong focus on innovation and innov innovative finance uh, and has made highly effective use of the FC uh, support, channeling financing to where it counts the most, that is to say, into youth unemployment and innovative startup companies. Let me say a word about the opportunities and challenges for Ireland. I mean, obviously, Ireland has rebounded from the crisis, as we all know, in an unparalleled manner, and has re established its reputation as an attractive location for business with good governance structures and strong capabilities, both in the public and private sectors. In the coming years, however, I believe sustainable expansion cannot be taken for granted, uh, particularly without more robust investment that recognises uh, the growing bottlenecks and indeed the unique exposure of Ireland to the impact of Brexit, as outlined in the government's own uh, detailed preparation plan published this week. New investment in infrastructure in Ireland remains the lowest uh, in the European Un Union. Moreover, in many parts of the country, infrastructure bottlenecks, as we all know, are already threatening recovery uh, and holding back growth, particularly in regional uh, locations. The EIB can uh, help address these challenges. Since joining the EIB as our first vice president 12 years, I've been privileged to see and hear at first hand uh, how the EIB is financing, for example, the transforming of the campuses in UCC and Trinity. In fact, we've done loan agreements with every single Irish university uh, in the last three to four years, uh, with the exception of one which we will sign with, I hope, within the next five weeks. These are the first loans the Irish universities have ever taken. Uh, and in fact, we're uh, on negotiating our third loan now with, uh, with Trinity. Uh, and all the work you can see, obviously, along Pier Street and so on, and uh, is, is being financed by the, by the EIB. We're financing the improved healthcare and the availability of social housing across the country. In fact, I hope we can announce uh, the first ever social housing PPP that we've done in any European country ever in, in, in the coming weeks. Uh, we're backing the transformation of the Port of Dublin. We're ensuring more sustainable management of uh, the Irish forestry sector and the expansion of the Irish forestry sector. We're uh, supporting world-class medical innovation with companies like Malin and allowing small companies to expand in cooperation with the Strategic Banking Corporation of Ireland. These are just some examples. Um, in addition, uh, our subsidiary, the EIF, has supported a number of equity funds for uh, high-tech sectors. It's also supported a 20 million business angels co-investment uh, instrument with Enterprise Ireland, uh, and a guarantee in favour of Microfinance Ireland, issued under the uh, EU programme for employment and social innovation to support very the smallest businesses. To support Ireland's strong economic recovery uh, even further, particularly in the context of the growing infrastructure bottlenecks in Ireland, as well as out of recognition that Ireland is uniquely exposed to the economic effects of Brexit, the EIB hopes to increase its level of support for Irish projects even further. 
With this aim in mind, as well as opening a permanent office uh, here in Dublin, uh, headed by Cormac Murphy, who is uh, here with us today, we have established with the Irish Government last December an Ireland EIB financing group. The group, which is chaired by Minister Noonan, uh, includes se senior management from the EIB, led by the President and myself, along with the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, Pascal Donoghue, and other ministers from the Irish Government, as well as senior officials from relevant government departments and agencies. To support the financing group, a number of thematic working groups have also been created, covering three areas in particular, financing connectivity, in other words, road, rail, air, ports, broadband, energy networks, financing social infrastructure, uh, with a particular focus on housing, health and education, and financing enterprise, uh, through the European Invest including through the European Investment Fund, that includes our support for the VC and private equity markets here, our co-financing uh, with the Irish banks and the SBCI, and in particular our focus on Irish agribusiness. Without prejudging the outcome of the detailed and constructive discussions currently taking place, there are five areas uh, in particular where we have signalled the potential for greater EIB financing. First of all, we can do more in terms of lending directly to the Irish Sovereign for exchequer capital projects, particularly those that are to be identified in the upcoming midterm review of the, uh, the public capital programme. Um, we can also do more to mobilise private finance for infrastructure, including under PPPs and uh, similar structures for investment in roads, public transport, social housing, as I mentioned, and other areas, consistent with the government's need to expand infrastructure investment while staying within the EU fiscal rules. We can do more direct lending support for the investment programmes of the Irish semi-states, and obviously these have been very long-standing and strong partners of the EIB in Ireland, notably the ESD, Board Gash, DAA and others, all of whom are obviously off the government's balance sheet, and we can finance them directly to expand their own uh, capital programmes. We also want to do increased direct investment in mid-sized Irish corporates, including with equity-type products. So one area where Ireland has not benefited as much under the Investment Plan for Europe and EIB as other European countries is direct lending to corporates. Um, obviously, the EIB is normally associated, rightly, with sovereign-backed infrastructure lending. Where it's less well-known is the fact that we will do um, direct lending to, to corporates. And, and that's something we're able to do now under the Investment Plan for Europe because of this guarantee we have from the European Commission. We also want to do more credit guarantees to Irish commercial banks to increase their own lending into key sectors, such as agribusiness, residential and business energy saving projects, and the SME sector, consistent with the bank's own needs to preserve scarce capital uh, while financing a growing economy, and in particular supporting those sectors most exposed to Brexit. Um, and to have maximum effect in this area, these initiatives will often combine EU and national budget resources, as well as EIB and uh, funding and capital, as well as funding and capital from the Strategic Banking Corporation of Ireland. And finally, we can do increase, more increased project finance for areas like the renewable energy sector, including solar, which is an area that's very well developed in a lot of European markets, but is only beginning uh, to make an appearance in Ireland. This, this Ireland EIB financing group has committed to, admit, uh, to meet at least twice a year, although the subgroups, the subgroups are meeting an awful lot more often. And the next meeting for the, for the main group is planned for later in May in Luxembourg to be led by Minister Noonan. And that will review prog progress um, with the objective to produce a much stronger pipeline of projects across multiple sectors in Ireland.